We're talking today from looking at Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, where Paul says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Let us pray. Well, we are just so thankful that you have given this opportunity to us to be saved, to turn our hearts over to you, to allow you to work within us. Help us to profess your name, the name that is above all names. We pray in Jesus' name. You know, I think I've thrown this out before, who is Lord in your life, but I think it's time of reflection again. Who is Lord in your life? Maybe we need to look at the definition of Lord, but who rules in your life? Who is the king in your life? Who do you answer to in your life? Do you answer to yourself? Do you answer to someone else? Or do you answer to God? Have you made Jesus Lord in your life? You know, with uh, many of us know the story, of, the story of Joseph and all the difficulties that he went through, being sold into slavery and then being sold to Potiphar. And he rose up in Potiphar's house to be Lord of his house. What does that mean? That means he was in charge of everything in Potiphar's house except for his wife. But everything else came under Joseph's dominion, under his care. And so they would use words at that time about Lord, the, the Lord of the house. And he was in control of that house. And so let's, what about our house? And I'm talking about here. Does it need to be cleaned out? And who is Lord? Who is ruling in our house right now? Commission. You know, that's an interesting word. We're heading up to in May to uh, the Air Force Academy. And it's been a distinct honor of commissioning a, a student there. But what does commission mean? And basically, commissioning is giving all authority and all power to that position. So when I commission somebody to be a second lieutenant, he is now has all the authority and all the power that goes with being a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. So God the Father commissioned Jesus. He gave Jesus all authority and all power to do what? Well, first of all, destroy the work of the devil and to restore what was lost. What was lost? Well, we were fallen and had not been restored, right? Relationship with God had been broken and never been restored until Jesus came and went to the cross for our sins. By going to the cross for our sins and dying an excruciating death, unfortunately, he took all our sins upon him. And restored relationship with God. Sin breaks relationship with God. That's why we could not have relationship with God until Jesus went to the cross to bear our sins. Because sin, and if you're living in sin in your own life right now, that breaks relationship with God. God is holy. And he cannot come into relationship with you if you're in sin. We know Jesus obeyed. But Jesus not only obeyed, he completely 100% obeyed the Father. Completely sold out to the Father. You know what? We got the same commission. We got the same commission Jesus had. What's that mean? 
as followers of Jesus, we have the same commission, we can have the same power, the same authority to what? To reconcile, to help people come back to the Lord, to destroy the works of the devil? Do we have any power over the devil? Oh, yeah. You know, too many Christians don't walk in their authority that they have as a result of Jesus giving you the authority. You know, we, we, we read in the Bible that about the disciples casting out demons. You know what? We have the same authority, the same power. We just don't believe it many times. But we also have to obey completely. We also have to be sold out to God, the Father, just as Jesus was. When we ask, why is this happening to me why is this taking place maybe we need to go to God and ask him why maybe there is sin that needs to be dealt with maybe there's unforgiveness that needs to be dealt with maybe there's bitterness maybe there's judgment maybe there's just pride whatever it might be something that we need to deal with in order to move forward and have walk in the authority that God wants to give us the authority he gave to Jesus proclaim, declare what Jesus did, okay, to others. You know it. Now spread it. Now say it out loud. Witness to what Jesus did. And then obey what he commands you to do. Obey what he commands you to do. And when he's commanding you to do something, I'll guarantee you, you may not know what the result's going to be. But if you obey him and follow him, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11 says, Therefore God exalted him, who? Jesus, to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. And what happens when we do that? It brings glory to God the Father when we acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. You know, and you may not know, so this is why I'm going to give it to you, in the New Testament, Jesus is declared Lord. How many times do you think, maybe? Wow. 600 times in the New Testament, Jesus is declared Lord. Now, how do we like to think of him as? Savior? If we think of Jesus saying we all need to be saved, right? Isn't that a little friendlier? Jesus, our Savior, 25 times. Why do you think Jesus declared his Lord so many times in the New Testament? The word that's used is kurios, which is a Greek word meaning master, king, owner. Ooh, those are words we don't like. Do you want to be property of somebody else? Do you want to be owned by somebody else? Do you want to be ruled by somebody else? Well, that's what Lord means. And that's why it's much friendlier to stand up here and talk about Jesus as sa our Savior, which is definitely the good news, than talk about Jesus as our Lord, which is more difficult to swallow. The supreme authority, the one and the only. He said, Savior, okay. Lord, mm, I don't know. I'll have to chew on that one for a little bit. Yeah. So who is Jesus? Do you see him as the Lord in your life? Do you see him as safe? No. Or do you just see him as a friend? Okay. Now, all three is the right answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the problem, the difficulty we have problem is seeing him as the Lord. That's where we stumble. And then here we're talking about this morning. Jesus, do we see him as a lion or do we see him as a lamb? You know, 
some of us here, you know, we went through Sunday school as kids, and it was always this friendly, loving, open arm Jesus, right? And we grow up in our adult life, and that's the way we want to see Jesus. And that is Jesus. But he's also a lion. He's also the lion of Judah. Okay? We too often want to diminish him to just this friendly guy that we, you know, you just hang out with and not fear him for who he is. Not respect him as the lion of Judah. The one, the courageous one, the bold one. The one that can decide whether we go to heaven or hell. Jesus. We need to have reverence for who he is. We need to fear God. Which is something that is again not taught much about anymore. Just the good things. And you know me, I don't like to just talk about the good things. I think that's only half of the gospel. The other half is things like fearing God, the other things of obedience, submission, not just blessing. Now, when we do the, the things, this is the part that's missed. We've got to be in there with the submission part. We've got to be in there with the obedience part if you want the blessing part. You can't just go jump and skip right over the submission and all the other stuff and go, okay, God bless me. I know, God, you exist to bless me. I know you exist to serve me. No, we exist to serve him, to serve God. And if you're sold out and you're willing to serve him, he will bless you. Let's not skip the steps. Let's not jump to the end of the story. And when he blesses us, that's not intended to stay with us. If you want to continue to be blessing, then that blessing needs to flow out of you into other people. Are you willing to bow your knee to him? And if you're not willing to bow your knee to him, why? Is it pride? If it's physical, I understand. You just can't get down on your knees. But there's an act of submission when we're on our knees. Something changes when we're on it. There's a great song about that when I'm on my knees with Jackie. Less, and whatever, less cuz. Anyway, I love that song. When I'm on my knees. Something changes when I'm on my knees. It's showing reverence. It's showing respect, love, fear for God. Do you acknowledge him as your creator? Do you realize that you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him? Some people think, well, I'm here to serve. If I'm here to serve him, wasn't that selfish on his part? No. <laughs> because he created you. <laughs> You're here because of him. That's right. And who is first in your life? Is it you? Is it someone else? Is it money? The love of money? Who is the Lord? Who rules? Romans 10, 9, Paul says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Lord. Jesus is Lord. Declare it. Proclaim it. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And believe it. I'm sorry I had to use the word slave. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad word, but that's basically, that's in way the Bible we use servant often but really true translation is slave nobody here probably wants to be a slave to anybody but I'll tell you right now you already are everybody on earth is slave to either Satan or Jesus you're either doing the work of Satan or you're doing the work of God now Satan is a great deceiver and there's many people who don't realize it's Satan. They're doing the work of Satan because they are deceived. I know I've been deceived in the past. And probably all of you here have been deceived at one time or another. Satan's great at deceiving us. And, but now I know if I think I'm being deceived, I can take it to Christ. I can take it to Jesus and ask him, is this from you or is this from Satan? And he will answer me. 
And if it's contrary to scripture, you know it's from Satan, it's not from God. I mean, that's always a good thing to check. So we're either serving one or the other. There is no such thing as not being a slave to one or the other. For if by the trespass of the one man, Jesus, death reigned through that man, Jesus, how much more are those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Yes, he gives us life, life abundantly, if we allow him to reign in us. Praise God for that. Again, relationship, there's nothing more critical than having an intimate relationship with Jesus. He is a living entity. He will transform you if you allow him to. But we have to know him intimately. We have to allow him in, even into those areas that we don't want anybody to know about or anybody to see. We have to be brought to the light. Christianity. Okay, there's a word. A million meanings. Right? But what is it not about? It's not about ideology. It's not about a collection of beliefs. It's not about philosophy. It's not about our core values. It's not about our morals. It's not about our lifestyles. It's not about our social causes. It's not about our worldviews. It's not about our concepts of faith. It is about Jesus and Jesus alone. That is what Christianity is about. And if the churches would realize that, boy, how powerful could we be? Christianity is about Jesus, and that's what it is about. We need to throw a lot of that other stuff to the side and focus on Jesus. Aristotle said, great philosopher, follow my teachings. Socrates, follow my teachings. Buddha, follow my meditations. Confucius, follow my sayings. Muhammad, follow my noble pillars. What did Jesus say? Follow me. Why? Is that different? Because Jesus is still alive. All these other guys are dead. If you have a relationship with Jesus, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will teach you. You don't have to just read about his teachings. He will disciple you. None of the other guys, everybody else is dead. They can't disciple you anymore. They're long gone. That's why you got to read what they wrote down. Now, I'm not dismissing the Bible. It's important that we read the Bible and God's Word. But also, we have a living entity in Jesus that can also guide us and lead us. In Matthew, Jesus said, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. You know what kingdom means? The king's dominion. When we pray for God's kingdom to come, we're praying for God to rule here on earth as it is in heaven. We're inviting him to come. Whether we're inviting him to come into the church or into our lives to clean house, to rule. That's how we're to pray. That God will rule in Pueblo, in Northside Christian Church, in our lives, in our government, every part of our society and culture. You know, when we're very little and we're first born and infants, you know, we're totally dependent on our parents. Because we can't feed ourselves. You know, we can't change our own diapers. You know, so we have that total dependent state. And later on, as we grow older, we start expressing our fallen nature. And what does that mean? That means that just as God did in Israel and had to bring the Ten Commandments and other laws down there, that people were out of control. We go from a survival instinct and dependent on our parents to a fallen nature where we think that we should have dominion over everything. What's good for me, screw everybody else. I mean, that's, that's our culture in the water now, right? 
So God had to bring rules and laws into the Israel culture because of people who were out of control, because of their fallen nature. Their desire, and our desire still today, is to dominate, is to control. And that's still part of our fallen nature. But what about Jesus when he came? You know, what I just say, I said, follow Jesus. So what did he do? He was the antithesis. He was the absolute opposite in the incarnation. Coming as God in human form, okay? Access. He had access to all power, all privileges of God the Father. He had access to everything, yet he performed service out of obedience. He only did what the Father told him to do. When Satan tempted him in the desert, and Satan said, you could jump off this cliff, you know, and you could bring legions of angels to, to rescue you. Jesus says, don't tempt me. When Satan said, turn this rock into water and bread, and Jesus said, no. He could have done anything. Yet he chose a life of service, a life of obedience. And if you want to follow him and make him Lord in your life, that's the same thing we have to do as well. He was in the habit of giving, not receiving, right? In the habit of serving, not being served, realizing that we're here to serve God, God isn't here to serve us. Acts of obedience, not dominance. And we're called today to follow him, to follow Christ. So it goes back to the original question, who is Lord? Not just who is your Savior, but who is your Lord. That was an invitation. Anybody needs prayer, you're welcome to come forward. I'm going to play a while playing this video. If you'd like to stay after church and you need prayer, we're happy to stay with you and pray with you as well. If you want to just sit, if there's something that is stirring up inside of you, and you want to take some time to just pray or meditate on it before God, you're welcome to. In the scripture for today, from Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, said, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth you profess your faith and are saved. Part of baptism is a time that we profess our faith in front of others. This is, uh, and when we're witnessing to other people, it's another opportunity to profess our faith. And sometimes it can be very uncomfortable because we're not sure how other people may react. But it's very clear in Scripture that that's exactly what we're to do. Okay, We declare that Jesus is our Lord and believe in our heart that he is. Then the, then the desire within you should be that you want to profess your faith, that you want to share who Jesus is with others as well. Um, I think what this week I'm just asking you to consider fasting from something this week. Okay. Now, oftentimes when and I'm going to probably do teaching again on spiritual disciplines in the near future, but fasting is was not done away with when Jesus came. Okay, we were not to stop fasting. It's something that we don't talk much about in the church anymore. And sometimes fasting may not be from food, okay? God may be asking you to fast from television. He may be asking you to fast from computer. He may be asking you to fast from sweets. He may be asking you something that maybe is not giving up food. Or maybe he's asking you for a 24-hour period to give up food, okay? But I'm asking you this morning to seek God and see if there's some, if he's asking you to fast this week from something, and maybe it's a 24-hour fast, maybe it's all week from something, or maybe it's skipping lunch all week. I don't know what he may be saying to you, but I think this right now, the church, we need to come together and fast uh, for the church 
and for one another. Uh, and so um, I'm just I'm putting it out there for you to consider. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just asking you to pray about it and seek God and see if he's revealing anything to you this week as far as how, if you should fast and what you should fast from and for how long. The one thing I strongly advise is do not fast from water. You have to have water, okay? And I don't think God's going to tell you to, to not drink water, but we have to have water. Food, we can go a long time without food, but only three days without water. So please don't fast from, sorry, from water unless you're clearly guided to do it for a short period of time. Uh, were you saying you were going to be here at noon if yes. anybody needs prayer? Yes. Carrie's offered her services to be here at noon all week long. If anybody wants to come in and, and, and pray uh, with her. Or just just to commit wherever you're at, you know, during that time that we all corporately praying together, whether you come here or not, um, it's just an opportunity that I'm supposed to share. Okay. Let's pray. Lord, we are just so thankful for your word. We're thankful for your disciple Paul and for the book of Romans and the truth that is revealed through your word. Lord, we just pray, uh, we just ask you that we come together as your body that we become unified and, and with sole one purpose, and that is to serve you. Lord, we are thankful that uh, you have put the word in our hands. We're thankful that uh, God the Father, you sent your Son to the cross so that we can be forgiven. Lord, help us um, to seek you for forgiveness. Help us to seek you to repent of those areas that we need to be cleaned out in our house to allow you to come and be Lord inside.